Hi, good afternoon. My name is Stephanie. I'm one of the social workers here in the Wellness Center at Boston IVF. Um, my name is Dylan. I'm also a licensed social worker. I'm the manager of mental health at the Wellness Center. My suggestion is to always start by telling the people that you trust and support you the most, kind of finding your safe people first um, and sort of just explaining to them what you feel comfortable in sharing. No one is really entitled to your medical history. And so what you feel comfortable and safe to share is entirely dependent on you. And so I usually suggest starting with your kind of close inner circle and allowing yourself to share what feels right. I think if you feel comfortable, it's also okay to sort of set some boundaries there. I know a lot of patients feel this anxiety of, you know, I've told some friends and family and now I'm getting lots of questions that either I'm not ready to answer or I don't want to answer, I want to answer at my own time. And so it is okay to set boundaries around what you want the support to look like or what you're comfortable sort of answering as you go through this process. I find that your support system most of the time will respect what you need and they are very eager to support you in the way that they can. And so if you're able to say, you know, these follow-up questions are hard for me to answer when I'm not ready to, then say that. Um, I think it's also okay to sort of let people in a little bit. I know that there's a lot of apprehension around, I don't wanna burden anyone else sort of with what I'm going through. Although again, your support system wants to be there for you as best as they can. And oftentimes it could even be a good way to build community. It could be a way to connect to other couples or patients that are also going through IVF. Um, and so I would say sort of trust your gut with who you want to tell um, and sort of kind of prepare ahead of time what information you feel comfortable sharing, what information you don't feel comfortable sharing. Also include your partner in on this um, because sometimes it is their medical history too. And so you wanna make sure that you're sort of on the same page with what you're comfortable sharing with who. I think there's also a little bit of a lack of, of understanding of timeline when it comes to doing IVF. And so I see patients run into that sometimes with sharing with friends or family that they will share with a friend or family member, hey, we're going to do IVF and, and that parents or friends or whoever they've shared with are expecting an update a few days later. And as most of you know, this process is long. So it's a marathon, not a sprint. And five days later, someone is probably not going to have an update. Nothing will really have changed. And so like Stephanie said, to kind of set those boundaries of, hey, I'm doing IVF and this is something I want you to know about because you're important to me when I have something to share, when I have an update I want to share, I'll tell you. But to kind of set that boundary of like, maybe please don't ask me for updates. There probably won't be one for a while. And when there's something to know, I'll tell you. But I think she mentioned it can be really hard to feel like you're constantly fielding questions and like they're just ready for an update a little faster than one is available. There is a difference between things being secret and things being private. And so the fact that you're doing IVF doesn't have to be a big secret. It doesn't have to be shameful. You don't have to be fearful that somebody will know about it, but it is perfectly appropriate for it to be private. It's your medical information. It's not something that's available for all people to know about, to weigh in on. I think one question that you can ask someone in response to their questions is like really simple, just a why do you ask? And so if someone is asking you, you know, what type of treatment are you doing? What's next for you guys? When is it happening? Then it's totally fine to say, oh, why do you ask? And so that's a little bit just trying to identify, are they asking because they just want an update? Are they asking because maybe they're being a little bit nosy and you know violating a little bit of your boundaries? Or are they asking because maybe they're struggling with fertility and are looking for guidance themselves? And so sometimes... I find that having information as to where their question is coming from makes it a little bit easier to answer. It's very appropriate to just say, oh, you know, I will give you updates when I have them, but I'm not really comfortable talking about it right now. You can say, um, you don't know what next steps are looking like. I think it's okay to say, we're doing fertility treatment and it's, it's taking a little longer than expected. So operating somewhere in the gray area, you don't have to give them zero information, but maybe you don't wanna give them 100% play-by-play details. So to 
to just say we're doing treatment and we hope it's successful. It's also okay to, to set those boundaries and be confident that you are only sharing what you're comfortable with because once you share, you can't unshare. So it's always okay to give somebody more information later. But again, that's your private life. That's okay to keep to yourself or between you and a partner. And so we know that even if things are said with a different intention, we know that they can still be hurtful, even if that wasn't the intent behind them. Um, and so in, in turn, if you can say like, I know you're trying to help, but that's actually not helpful to me. It's more hurtful. That might actually help that person understand like, oh, I'm, I'm not helping them in the way that they need, or I'm not supporting them in the way that they find helpful. And so sort of letting them know that I think it's just a way to sort of educate them. Like that's not the support I'm looking for. That's not kind of this like toxic positivity that I'm looking for. You know, a lot of the times I'm sure you're just looking to be heard and validated. And to remember, I think it is coming from their own discomfort of they don't know what to say or how to navigate that. It, it is more their lack of knowledge on what is appropriate and has nothing to do with you or what you need or what you deserve. It is their own kind of shortcomings of not knowing how to handle that and, and probably just feeling really uncomfortable.